and the stream is up and we are back in the world of Soma. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks now, but we are getting back into the swing of it. So we left off our intrepid heroes on their dark multiverse crossing journey, seeking after the core, the center of this dark multiversal dragon deity known as Tiamat. To find their way, they are seeking out their own dark alternate copies, uh, parallel versions of themselves where something went horribly wrong in their story. Uh, by defeating or securing the cooperation of these dark doppelgangers, our heroes are drawing ever closer to their true foe, Tiamat herself. Uh, they had just fought their way, uh, fought their way through a world where Alex uh, became the Raven King of Bandits, a uh, wild, uh, self-centered, and violent bandit captain who was holding the entire hinterlands uh, essentially hostage. You all managed to uh, fight him uh, in his own uh, mountain stronghold, eventually bringing him crashing to the ground and bringing yourself one step closer to Tiamat. You all passed into the strange space between worlds, the, in some ways, the body of Tiamat, uh, a strange dimensional world sheltered from the true multiverse uh, with all of its powerful energies. And as you pass through this space, uh, instead of arriving normally at the next location, you found yourselves uh, ripped out of that space to come crashing down into what appears to be a throne room. A throne room that has been set with a huge, elaborate, magical circle. Uh, high up on a dais on the other side of the room, you have found yourselves in front of another version of Alex. Uh, this one uh, seemingly sitting on the throne of the Carnian kingdom itself, uh, the region from which many of you hail. Uh, he is wearing the dark colors of the Morin regime with a massive and familiar greatsword at his side. Uh, three dark knights stand uh, arrayed around him like perhaps imperial guards, uh, each one radiating menace in their own way. Uh, as you landed, uh, he made a strange comment, uh, something like, uh, I see that all of my preparations have come to fruition. And that is where we left you all. So here you are in this throne room. Um, this alternate Alex is on this dais up ahead of you. There is an arcane uh, ritual seems to have been inscribed into the floor here. Uh, the power of which is rapidly fading. It doesn't seem like it has a any active effect any longer. So what would you all like to do? One second. Let me switch my audio around. Something's not coming out. Uh -oh. There we go. Hopefully it caught me earlier. All right. Try that again. Uh, are the people up at the altar talking at all, or are they just staring at us? Yes. So yeah. you recognize a version of Alex up there in the center uh, who seemed to be expecting you all. But that's all that he has said so far. Okay. Um, I'll leave this one up to Alex. Well, you know, as I uh, strut forward a, a few steps, <clears throat> I go, you know, I happen to, I like the decor. Um, gotta ask, why, uh, why bring us here? Uh, I'm going to give everybody a chance to go ahead and make a perception check for me. Okay, that's going to be the best one. Then. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, so Jack and Tiny, you both key into this faster than the others. As Alex steps forward to start talking, uh, you're taking a glance out the windows. And you see something very distressing. Every world that you all have gone to so far um, has been a whole world. Um, For the most part. Um, It seems like the hinterlands of the Raven King uh, stretched as far off into the distance as you could see. And the same thing with the Pandoran Mountains of the Frozen Child and the Mad One. Um, But you see something odd here. The windows are not just glass, but there seems to be some kind of uh, arcane markings inscribed around the edges of each window and actually sort of lining the whole wall. And outside the window, you see... Nothing. A dark void, absent of any detail or light, completely bare. Is it just because he has, like, the magic window blinds pulled or something? Or is it actually, like the outside is looking like that. This is all that's left of his world. Hmm. That's distressing. So yeah, that's even Alex, worse. You, you make the connection. This reminds you of the world of the Witch King. You remember that there was a storm raging around that mountain, but it was almost like the storm was holding back something at the edges that was pushing in on it. You can almost feel this like like a glass tunnel through the ocean. You're fine right now, but you just have a a horrifying understanding that there is something completely alien and antithetical to life, as you know it, on the other side of that glass. As uh, Alex, you know, looks around, looks out the windows, takes a peek, he goes, Well, I think we need, I think we need to hurry up and find Tiamat faster. I want to save this world. The other Alex uh, is looking at you in a very calculating way. But give me an insight check. Ah. <laughs> hey, you got it. Nice. I'm happy about that. So, sure. as you are sort of stepping forward. You see these three guards all kind of shift a little bit. Uh, They are making sure they are ready to move uh, as soon as you try something. The other Alex doesn't even budge. He is evaluating you. And with a 22 insight, uh, you piece some things together fairly quickly here. This version of Alex is in a strange place. There are a handful of people you would expect to find sitting on this throne. Uh, Perhaps in a happier world, 
uh, the Carnian royal family would successfully uh, oust the Morin regime and reclaim this throne room. You know that General Morin uh, himself sits here uh, in your world, as best uh, you are aware. So what road puts Alex on this throne? Well, you notice something important. This Alex doesn't have that power, that legacy that you received from Gear. There's no trace of that uh, sort of uh, wing and feather energy that has shaped your life or the life of the bandit king Alex that you just defeated. Instead, this Alex has a titanic build. He is probably another like six inches wider at the shoulders than you are. He even looks taller. And you recognize that greatsword. That is Wilhelm's greatsword. <clears throat> the other Alex says, Hmm. You might be right in some ways. I don't much like this grand story of worlds and dimensional seas of dark dragon gods. I was content. I had a kingdom. And my kingdom was well run. And now it's nothing. And he just sort of stares out through one of the windows for a moment. What is Alex thinking right now? Well, I'm kind of thinking, I'm just curious the steps that this Alex, the warlord Alex, or King Alex, you know, took. Because, you know, I've always, it's this Alex is, I've always dabbled. Well, it's like, what would it be like to sit on the throne and have people very much do your whim? You say go here and they go. You say fight, they fight. You send an army. You say gather an army and you have an army. But then as I thought more about it, for me, it's too much. It's not the, the life I cared. I've seen you know, my Alex, he's, he's starting to have that, that fight, you know. Kind of just beaten out of him. Every conflict he gets in, all the damage he takes, the how often he goes down and has to get back up and you know, it just, it's always, he's always just thinking about that, like could this next fight just be my last one? Am I I get bested, or is my is my group here? You know, our little family makeshift of dwarves, rabbits, people on fire, and a barbarian. Are we going to fall apart? And you know, so the more I think about it, the more like I don't care for a throne. I care for a simple farm life where I don't have to wield a sword and I don't have to face death, monsters, and some of the most crooked people you could probably meet. 
But right now, I gotta finish and finish the ruin. I get to team at one way or another, and die trying. That's kind of what Alex is. Just you Neil know, Ponder. He's he keeps seeing his past lives, the Raven King, and now he uh, Alex without when Year dies, but gives you the his uh his, his feather. And this is a uh, Alex, but no gear at all and no feather, and he uh, becomes a king. And I'll, I'll never know if he was a crooked king that people want to rebel against. I don't know if he's a great king. He says he runs a great kingdom, but I mean, how do you how do you run it with uh, iron fist and chains and whips, or with uh, compassion and thoughtfulness? And as I look out the windows of nothing, I think, stupidly, hey, I know a world where I just killed Alex. A world where he can go kill Wilhelm, reclaim a throne, a world that hasn't been completely destroyed, and if we're fast enough, a world where he can sit on a throne until he grows old and die. So then how do you burn it off someone else's throat that's not yours? All of this sort of churns through your head. How much of this do you want to share with him? You know what? I'll share it all. I'll spew it. Why not? Let's see if we become buddy buddies and let's talk our way out of a fight. <laughs> I'm sure not in the mood to fight. <laughs> so you... You share your your perceptions of this. Your this this strange perspective that you've gained, encountering these other versions of yourself, knowing different worlds, uh, have unfolded in all these different ways. And as you share this, and you look at this version of Alex. You find yourself tapping into just a bit of the memories and impressions of this Alex. Uh, You all sort of hit a wavelength and synchronize together. For the previous Alex... Gear made it to the village, but only just. Dying before he was able to pass on any of his uh, training or wisdom or understanding. For this Alex, Gear never came. This Alex's Gear died fighting Wilhelm. He died on the battlefield when this Alex was still a child. It wasn't Gear who came into town. It was Wilhelm at the head of an army who took this scrawny, scrappy farm child and took him under his wing. But the tutelage of Wilhelm is not the same as the tutelage of Gear. This Alex became strong, but lacked many of the most important things that make our Alex who he is. So he learned power, he learned command, but the more he learned, the less he cared for uh, your little village, for the inn, for the farms, for the roads. And the more he hungered for command to be the one who stands over maps, to be the one who sits on thrones. And you catch glimpses. The day that this world's Wilhelm finally outlives his usefulness and this Alex takes an order from this world's General Morin and he kills Wilhelm and takes his sword. And then it's not but two years later that this Alex 
overthrows Morin from the inside, taking claim to his armies and his empire. Just as the other Alex was the Raven King, you feel on some important, deep level, this Alex is the Iron Tyrant. There is no gentle kingliness here. This is a figure of authority and control and closely regulated violence. He hears your offer and he stands and says, I agree. It sounds certainly worth exploring that there are other worlds beyond this one. That there is a great and wide universe beyond with world after world. But you're right about something else. I see your little band here. Your malcontents, your rebels, your mountain barbarian and your mongrels. And I see a version of myself who couldn't cut it. Who wasn't good enough to do the things that I have done. What thrones have you sat on, Alex? I don't sit on thrones normally. Normally at rubble under my feet. I topple them half the time. The other half the time, I never gave a shit about them. I sit on a throne and have everyone looking at you. You can simply just go wherever you want. Cause trouble here. Make allies here. To make your trouble you cause somewhere else. Not your problem. Do you know who truly goes where they want? Who does what they want? Those with power. Those with authority. I walk anywhere I please on this world. I see that. And I was looks around. In my world, I can walk a little farther. <laughs> For now. <sighs> yes, maybe this has... This ploy has worked for you all before. Maybe you have found reconciliation with the darker corners of your own hearts. Tell me, what other bleeding heart Alex's have you found? Oh, we had one. He popped into our world and he was a hell of a guy. Just got unlucky. Oh, he's dead. As expected. <laughs> well. In the end, it won't matter. There's infinite more of you and I. <clears throat> infinite more worlds than this. And with that device, I intend to find them. And he stands. <laughs> and there is a shunk sound as he pulls the massive great sword of General Wilhelm up and out of the stone where it had sunk. And he says, yeah, I think we both knew it was going to end like this. I had a great feeling too. He takes a step forward. Shame. And I'm going to have everybody roll for initiative. <laughs> Okay. 
wow, this might be a campaign first. It correctly input all of your all's initiatives uh, on the first try. Oh, nice. So I I blame me using Firefox now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Switching to Firefox fixed it. So Jack, you are at the top of the initiative. There are three of these knights. Um, each one seems slightly different than the next. Uh, one has uh, some kind of uh, glowing halo around their head. One has uh, a slender silver sword. And the other has a book that is just floating in the air in front of them. And of course, there is the Iron Tyrant Alex standing front and center. What do you want to do? I'm just now realizing that I'm kind of really far away. Yeah, 95 whole feet away. Oh, and just to describe the room a little bit for you, uh, these are columns along each side. Uh, each column is approximately five by five at the base and extends all the way up to the ceiling, which is probably 30 feet up. Well, at least we won't have to deal with anyone flying too much. We <laughs> won't deal with any flying this time. Besides us, you know. And and fly up to 30 the, the rest of the room is relatively flat, with the exception of the staircases that the evil Alex is on. Yes. And are these like gate, like a gate, fence, a fence, or something along the front here? Yeah, I'm adding some uh, uh, some, some flat metal. representation to make it a little easier to yeah. see through the 3D. So I think what I'm going to do is move over to the side behind a column and use my bonus action to hide and then prepare an action to throw a dagger, a psychic dagger at anyone who might uh, come close to start attacking my friends. All right. Oh, very good. Just marking our height differentials here. Uh, um standing next to the blue square is that essentially behind a column or do i need to come over uh it depends on who all you want cover from um yeah so probably directly behind it you'd have the most cover from the most people but yeah that guy i'm, that you had, I'm mostly it, just trying to to hide in the sense of them not knowing when I might pop out or what direction I might like obviously they see me move there but they, they don't know which side I'll pop out of or yeah, when I think I'll you, pop out I think you're good mechanically to roll stealth okay I, I did roll stealth yeah um, but I was just wondering like placement on the map am I placed right uh, yeah I think so yeah okay um, then that will like I said, just readying an action in case anyone gets within five feet of one of my friends or, or myself, I suppose. All right. The next up is the one with this strange halo around their head. Mm -hmm. Let's look at some distances. 
Oops, I whoa. <laughs> I zoomed in on the wrong part of the screen. Uh oh. There we go. Yeah. Gonna give them little name plates real quick. Because if I don't halfway through, I won't know who they are. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, Mindfire has a clear run straight at Alex. Uh, so he is going to use his move, Mindfire. So, Alex, um, you need to make a an intelligence saving throw. Got me out, guys, for the rest of this fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> How? <laughs> Your intelligence save is not even that bad. You just roll bad. <laughs> There is a, my indomitable that one. Yeah, that and I'll I'll even just tell you that'd be a good one to indomitable. <laughs> okay, we're good. Whoa, there we awesome. go. That was a very good one to do. Uh you all see the the halo flash behind uh this knight's head, and the same sort of light starts to form near Alex's head. And then he, like, shakes it off and pushes through. Um, whoops. <laughs> I put down a layer action, and there is no layer action. <laughs> uh, that means it is Alex's turn. Well... <laughs> I could... cats <laughs> it has been enough time since we kind of got teleport that could use the the wings of flying uh, I think so we're, we're counting it as sort of everything gets recharged mm. uh, so I'm gonna fl I'm like cast wings of fly and then Ooh. I'm gonna There's 20, and then I might just, you know, go 20 feet in the air there so that I can uh, not be within melee range. For now. And I might hide behind this pillar as well. Right. And... Yeah. All that good. All right. You have taken some cover. It is Brick's turn. Brick is so far back. Let's see. I think Brick is going to use his bonus action. He's going to teleport 60 feet to here-ish. And then it's going to duck behind this pillar. So it's his bonus action. For his action, he's going to dodge. It is the Sword Knight's turn. They are going to go ahead and start making their way down. That does get them to range with Brick. Uh, 
it's going to get up to there and then it disappears. <laughs> Tiny, you're up. Move behind this pillar because I can't move very far because I'm tiny. And I'm going to channel Divinity Twilight Sanctuary. All right. All right. And. Uh, let me think it helpful for bonus action, do I? Have? Of course not. Spiritual weapon? Thinking that, but it. It's.